Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be covering what is high performance computing, what is parallel computing, what is distributed computing, and also I'll explain what is computational grid and difference between parallel computing and distributed computing. Guys, I have uploaded complete cloud computing subject tutorials. I will provide that link in description. You can watch from there. If you are watching this video for the first time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. At first, I will explain what is high performance computing. But before that, you need to know what is computing. Guys, computing is nothing but using computers to perform certain tasks is known as computing. So, we will use computers to perform certain tasks. This is known as computing. Now, I will explain what is high performance computing. High performance computing refers to the use of multiple processors working together with a resources such as memory, storage, input output devices to solve complex and large scale problems. Guys, in high performance computing, we will use multiple processors. If you use multiple processors, then our computer will be fast. I will give an example. For example, let us say this is my computer and this is my CPU. My CPU contains multiple processors. These processors are connected to motherboard. So, if there are multiple processors, my computer will be fast. And the CPU contains memory and storage that is nothing but hard disk and RAM. And also it contains input and output devices like printer, keyboard, mouse, speakers, etc. By using all these resources, we can solve complex problems. So, in high performance computing, we will use multiple processors with resources like memory, storage, input output devices, etc. in order to solve large scale problems. This is known as high performance computing. Guys, in high performance computing, processors can be either of same type or different type. If they are of same type, then we call it as homogeneous processors and if they are of different type, then we call it as heterogeneous processors. For example, let us say, inside my CPU there are 4 processors. All these 4 processors are Intel 8 core processors. So, this is Intel 8 core, this is also Intel 8 core processor, this is also Intel 8 core and this is also Intel 8 core. So, all these are of same type. So, if all processors are of same type, then we call it as homogeneous processors. For example, let us say, now inside my CPU, there are 4 different type of processors. All are not of same type, all are different type. Then we call it as heterogeneous processors. In past when you talk about high performance computing, we usually mean supercomputers, which are very powerful machines used for heavy calculations. Now high performance computing also includes smaller systems like regular computers like desktops, PCs, etc. These are found in place like schools, offices, etc. Guys, in olden days, high performance computing means only supercomputers. There are no other computers. Only by using supercomputers we can perform high calculations. But whereas at present, even our regular computers like laptops, desktops, etc. We call all these computers as high performance computers. Guys, in science, for complex problems, you need to perform lot of calculations. For example, let us say protein folding. Guys, protein folding is the process of how protein takes shape. So, if scientists understand this, then they can develop new medicines. So, for protein folding, we need high performance computing in order to perform lot of calculations. And next scientific task is nuclear fusion models. Guys, nuclear fusion is nothing but we will generate energy by using sun. So, even for this process, scientists must perform lot of calculations. So, for this they need high performance computing. So, normally by using our regular computers, we cannot complete complex tasks. So, for this large scale problems, we need high performance computing. And high performance computing is nothing but in our system, we will use multiple processors in order to perform these complex operations. High performance computing enables faster and more efficient problem solving by using combined power of multiple computers. Guys, multiple processors are like multiple computers working together in order to handle complex operations that cannot be handled by single computer. Whenever user give big data or big task to this high performance computing, this big data is shared among multiple processors. This multiple process will solve problem and then it will give result to the user. This is structure of high performance computing. Next I will explain what is parallel computing. Parallel computing is when multiple processes work together at the same time to solve one big problem. All the processes are usually similar and connected to each other. For example, let us say I am user 
I give a big problem to this computer. And this is parallel computing. That is nothing but inside this computer, there are multiple processors and all these processors are of same type. Guys, in parallel computing, we will use multiple processors and all these processors are of same type. So whenever I give big problem, this big problem is shared among multiple processors. Guess I will give one real time example so that you can clearly understand. For example, let us say college faculty give one task to student. The task is to create C material, Python material, Java material and C++ material. So at first student will create C material. For example, it will take one day of time. And similarly next day student will create Python material another one day of time and next another day Java material another one day of time and next C++ material. So it will take approximately four days of time. So one student is same like one processor inside computer. Now what faculty will do is faculty will select four students. So in order to create four materials. So now faculty will give task to four students in order to create four materials. So these are like multiple processors. If there are multiple processors, then work will be shared among these processors and then our work will complete faster. This is parallel computing. Parallel computing is nothing but we'll use multiple processors in order to solve one big problem. So big problem is nothing but we need to create four study materials. This is big problem. So now task is shared among multiple processors in order to solve one big problem. Serial computing is like doing things step by step. A single processor does one instruction after another. I already said this example. If there is only single person, then at first he will create C material. Only after creating C material, then he will start Python material. So he will complete work step by step manner. So single person is same like single processor. Only if there is one processor, that processor will complete work in step by step manner. So only after completing first instruction, then it will go to second instruction. So in serial computing, we will use only one single processor in our CPU. And we also call this serial computing as sequential computing. In parallel computing, we will use multiple processors. Their processors will work together in order to solve one big problem. And all these processors are of same type. That is nothing but all these processors are of homogeneous type. One of the example is supercomputers. In supercomputers, there will be thousands of processors connected together in order to solve complex problems. Guys, if you use parallel computing, it will save time and money because if you use multiple process at a time, then your work will complete faster. And instead of purchasing multiple computers, you can purchase only single computer with multiple processors. So multiple processors are same like multiple computers, which will complete work faster. So it will save time and money. And next one is solve bigger problems. So if there is any large problem, this large problem is shared among multiple processors in order to solve that large problem. And third advantage is does multiple things at once. In serial computing, only after completing first task, it will go to second task. But whereas in parallel computing, so tasks are shared among multiple processors. So a single computer can do only one thing at a time. But with parallel computing, multiple computers can work together on different tasks at the same time. And fourth advantage is uses resources from different places. Guys, in parallel computing, if our computer is busy, then we can also use other computers from different places by using internet. Next, I will explain what is computational grid or we also call it as grid computing. A computational grid is a system made of both hardware and software that allows many computers to work together. It gives reliable, consistent and low cost access to powerful computing. Guess I will give an example so that you can clearly understand what is grid computing. For example, let us say there are four computers. This is computer which is located in Hyderabad. And this is another computer which is located in Delhi. And this is laptop. And this is another computer. This is located in Bangalore. And this is located in Goa. So in computational grid, all these computers are connected to each other through internet. And not only internet, if all these computers want to communicate with each other, they need to install one common software. So common software must be installed in all these computers in order to communicate between each other. So whenever big task is given, this big task is divided into smaller subtasks. These tasks are shared among multiple computers by using this common software. And even if one system fails, 
remaining systems will work. These are advantages of computational grid. And the first one is reliable. Reliable is nothing but even if one computer fail, remaining computers will work. And next one is consistency. As work is shared among multiple computers, performance will be good. And third one is low cost. Instead of purchasing one expensive big computer, we can purchase smaller computers in cheap rate and then we can connect to those computers and we can use. So which will save our money. In computational grid, many computers are connected in network to share work. In computational grid, all computers are connected to each other by using internet and they will share work among themselves. A big task is broken into smaller subtasks and each computer works on the one part of the task at the same time. Guys, all computers will perform work at the same time. So it will save our time. And after finishing, each computer will send result back to the main computer. These computers may also belong to different organizations or locations. It is not mandatory that all computers must be in one place. These computers may also be located in different locations. This is example, laptop, desktop and supercomputers and database. All these are connected to each other by using internet and they will share work among themselves. For example, after completing work, this data is stored in database by using internet. Next I will explain what is distributed computing. Distributed computing is a system where multiple computers work together as if they are like one single computer. These computers can be closer together, connected by local network or far apart, connected through the internet. And there can also be different types of computers such as desktops, laptops, large machine servers, etc. Guys, parallel computing and distributed computing, both are different. In parallel computing, inside CPU we'll use multiple processors. But whereas in distributed computing, we'll use multiple computers and all these computers are connected to each other by using internet or cable. And these computers can be of any type like laptops, desktops, servers, etc. And the main goal of distributed computing is to make all computers work together in order to solve problems faster and efficiently. Distributed computing is like dividing big tasks among multiple people instead of giving complete work to a single person. These are advantages of distributed computing and the first advantage is scalability. Guys, in distributed computing, you can easily add or you can also easily remove computers. For example, if there is big work, then we can add multiple computers. And if there is less work, then we can also remove computers. So based on our work, we can easily add or remove computers without disturbing our current work. So it makes easier to handle more work as system grows. And next one is redundancy. In distributed computing, we'll use multiple computers in order to perform certain tasks. So even if any computer fails, remaining computers will work. So problem in one computer will not affect other computers. Still work will complete. So this setup makes computing more flexible, reliable and faster. Flexible is nothing but we can add or we can remove systems if needed. And reliability is nothing but even if one computer fail, remaining computers will work. And we can connect all those computers by using internet or even by using cable. Next I will explain difference between parallel computing and distributed computing. Guys in parallel computing, in our CPU there will be multiple processors and processor will share work among themselves. And whereas in distributed computing, a single task is distributed among multiple systems. In parallel computing, we will use only one single computer. Inside the single computer, there will be multiple processors. And whereas in distributed computing, there are a lot of computers involved. Parallel computing consists of multiple processors in order to perform multiple operations. And whereas in distributed computing, multiple operations are performed by multiple computers in a distributed environment. Parallel computing supports shared and distributed memory and whereas distributed computing supports distributed memory and whereas in parallel computing bus communication mechanism is used for communication and whereas in distributed computing message passing mechanism is used for communication as there are multiple processors inside single computer system performance can be improved in parallel computing and whereas in distributed computing and whereas in distributed computing fault tolerance that is nothing but even if one computer fails, remaining computers will work. And next one is system scalability. We can add or we can remove systems based on our need. And next one is we can also share resources like printer, scanner, etc. So all these are improved in distributed computing. 
whereas in parallel computing scalability and fault tolerance is less and whereas in distributed computing there will be high scalability and fault tolerance when compared to parallel computing in parallel computing a single computer will manage all operations and whereas in distributed computing all computers coordinate with each other by using advanced mechanisms these are differences between parallel computing and distributed computing guys these are advantages of distributed system over centralized system centralized system is nothing but one main system which will perform all operations and the first advantage is economics instead of purchasing one high configuration system you can purchase many small computers which are cheaper and next advantage is speed when compared to single computer distributed systems has more computing power so they can complete task faster and third advantage of distributed system is inherent distribution guys some applications are spread over many locations for example if you consider supermarkets like dmart that supermarkets are present in many locations so for such kind of systems distributed system is good choice and fourth one is reliability in distributed systems even if one computer fails remaining computers will work so we can complete task and fifth one is incremental growth guys for example if there is any big task then you can also add computers in order to perform those task and these are disadvantages of distributed system over centralized systems and the first one is software guys if you want to connect many computers in different location we also need software so developing such software is very tough and next disadvantage of distributed systems is network issues in distributed systems we will connect to various kinds of systems in different locations either we can connect by using cable or internet so there is high chance for network issues and next disadvantage is security as many computers are connected to each other keeping data secure is very tough